The GTS is a 981, which means it's got buttons. Many, many buttons. Let's celebrate the buttons. On the 718, we would find here the drive control. A little toggle sits down here, quick rotation to different modes. There's a little turbo boost on the 718 as well, kind of mimics the Manatino which Ferrari introduced, but the 981 doesn't have one. So we have to make do with the buttons. Welcome to Project 91. Welcome back to the channel if you've been with us before. This is going to be a short video about buttons and everything that you can do with the lovely centre console in the Boxster, Cayman, everything 981 and indeed 991 and I think a few others as well. But in the absence of the drive control wheel on the steering wheel, we have the buttons, they have some presets and it really does allow us to define shape and give some character to the way the Boxster drives. So let me take you through them and explain a little bit more about what they do and perhaps give you a little bit more understanding about some of the subtleties involved. So the first button, or indeed pair of buttons, are obviously for the roof. This is the box, it's convertible, that's why I love it so much. Uh, they are sitting in the centre there and we lift and hold to open and lift and hold to close. Let's do that now. You should see a little bit more light coming into the cabin. So lifting and holding, windows drop a little, centre latch unhooks back it goes, the flaps at the side pop up, roof goes all the way down, the flaps come down and the windows, irrespective of what position they're in, will close at that point. So if you had the windows slightly open they will go all the way back up at that point. And the reverse is just as easy, we just lift and hold, windows go down, roof comes up, centres on the rail, latch engages, tightens, pulls it all forward, and there you go, the windows. That's pretty straightforward. And you can do it on the fob as well, which is a feature that in Europe is possible. I don't believe it's possible in North America for safety reasons, but you can walk up to the car, press and hold the open button, and it'll unlock the car and lower the hood, which is a rather nice way of getting the car ready if you want to dump some warm air before you get into it. So this is the main selection of switches to manage the way the car drives. There are no other controls that manage that. Uh, above and just off camera, we have the sort of heating and ventilation, the PCM. And on the steering column, there is a stalk uh, in this particular car, which doesn't have the multi-control wheel, multi-function wheel, the stalk which controls the dashboard computer. But this is where we manage the, the driving and the, uh, the setup of the car. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buttons, three blanks. Uh, as far as I can tell, in the 981 generation, those blanks are basically never uh, full. I don't believe there are any other options. Um, this being a GTS, so it's got pretty much everything as standard. No other options to fill out here. I think you can find other individual switches. Possibly the Spider has a button here for ESC. I don't know, but this is basically it. So we just have to put up with these and accept them as what they are. That being the way of Porsche. Now. It's probably worth starting by explaining what these buttons uh, represent. They represent the ability to change settings which are already enabled. Uh, there is already a throttle map. We already have a suspension setting. The exhaust is in a mode. The engine will do start stop. And uh, by activating these buttons or switches if you prefer, we can modify the characteristics. And Porsche has kindly uh, put some of these in combination, which I'll take you through. But the beauty of this centre console and why I love it so much and why in the absence of the drive control I don't feel I'm missing out on anything is that you can endlessly combine these in different combinations. So let's take a look. So as we start the car up we have none of the lights set and that means we have the, uh, the basic or the most comfort orientated throttle map, we have the most traction control and stability management in place, we have the suspension dampers uh, set to their comfort zone uh, mode I should say. The exhaust extra valves are not open, we have auto start stop enabled. So it's sort of in its comfort safe easy mode and we can go from there. 
So the first thing we might want to do is enable sport mode. And Porsche decided that by pressing sport, you will also turn on PSE, Porsche Sports Exhaust, and this is a light for the A off comes on. So what does this mean uh, at this point? What it means is that when the light is on, the auto start stop has been disabled, uh, which is a feature of sport mode. So when that is illuminated, the car will not turn itself off auto start stop at idle. So sport codes on PSE, Porsche Sports Exhaust, disables auto start stop. And that's great. Sport mode will sharpen the throttle map slightly. It'll also nudge back a degree the PSM, Porsche Stability Management. So the amount of electronic software control applied to all the four axles, the engines, the brake, to uh, prevent you going backwards into a hedge. And that's a lovely way to drive the car day to day uh, if you're just pootling down a lane uh, but you don't want to sort of scare the horses. Now this is where it gets fun because of course we can actually modify what we've got here. We can't disable auto start stop in sport mode. You may have heard a little chirp there from the dash telling me that's possible. What we can do if we don't want to be uh, making loud noises with our sports exhaust so we can disable that. So actually what we just get is the th ostensibly the throttle map and if unless you're driving the car very hard you won't notice any other differences with the PSM. And that's great. So that's quite nice if you put burbling through town and you don't want to be antisocial, you can turn off PSE. Equally, you might like PSE, but you might not need the sport mode. You might prefer to leave it disengaged if it's wet, for example. So you can turn that off. Notice the auto start stop is, uh, goes off too. And we can simply engage on its own PSE. So the valves open in the sports exhaust. We get a bit more burble at various rev points in the, uh, the rev range. And that's all lovely and fun. Now at this point, we can start to add back in other bits and pieces. We might actually want to disable auto start stop, and that's also possible as well. So we come to a halt after a bit of a blat, it won't kill the engine, we can keep some cooling going on. Um, and actually if we put sport back on, they will come on. But if you then turn sport off, it remembers that previous mode as well. So we start to get a sense of how we can create much more personalized driving modes. So let's disable those, there they go. Right, sport plus, does some of what sport does plus a bit more. So we can see auto start stop comes on, the function is disabled, PSC is enabled, and the PASM, Porsche Adaptive Suspension Management, I should say Porsche Active Suspension Management, correctly, PASM is enabled. We'll come back to PASM in a mo. Sport Plus produces an even sharper throttle map and it knocks back the PSM, Porsche Stability Management, even more, a little bit more slip angle, and it will also in the 981 introduce rev match or auto throttle map, uh, matching when you're downshifting this being a manual which obviously the pdk boxes would automatically that's quite a nice feature although it comes with a sharper throttle map if you've got a driver who perhaps is confident driving the car briskly but is less familiar with manual maybe they've been driving automatic sport plus gives the auto blip on the down changes so they're not graunching gears and it just feels a bit more comfortable. And as before, we can disable features here. So we might be going down a fairly crumbly B road, too many of which are in the UK. We can revert the PASM to soft or normal mode, and we can turn off sports exhaust. Again, we can't disable auto start stop or re-enable the function in Sport Plus uh, and so on and so forth. So there we go. We can start to see how there's some pre-coded options and we can play around with those to our heart's content to get the combinations we like. If you want to go sharper with a bit of sports exhaust, a bit more pliancy in the suspension, you can do, and so on and so forth. Now, I said I'd come back to PASM, and I will do in a moment. Let's look at those other buttons first. This is PSM, Porsche Stability Management. We can turn that off. This isn't a quick press and hold for safety reasons. You have to press and hold. The light comes on. We now have ostensibly disabled the stability management system. As I understand it, if you actually trigger ABS under braking with this disabled, it will re-engage it. Now, I haven't actually tested that myself, but I believe that's the case, having read around on the forums. The other button we haven't looked at here is the, uh, the rear spoiler. Uh, this will automatically, as it stands, rise or come up, be enabled, I think in the UK, it's about 70 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour and I think it then uh, will park itself back down again 
after a period when the speed is lower than that, 50-55. So it'll do it automatically as you go along, but if you want to have it up for whatever reason, you press and hold. Actually, I should say you press it to go up once. You might be able to hear that whir in the background. And that will now stay up irrespective of road speed and any other settings. Uh, if you want to uh, put it down, you have to press and hold. And there we go. Uh, that being a bit of a safety protocol to avoid anything getting trapped in there. Now, actually, in terms of washing the car, it's like uh, off piece at the moment, it's fine. I find it really useful to have that up so we can get all the water and dirt sitting underneath the rear, uh, the rear spoiler, and then we can put it down again afterwards when everything's dry. And off that goes too. Now, let's talk about PASM. So PASM, PASM, is perhaps a little misunderstood in Porsches. First things first, it's a damping system, not a, not a suspension system. It only works on the damper and not on the coil. There are some more sophisticated systems on the market in different cars, different manufacturers, that will alter the spring rate, principally through, I think, uh, air suspension. But when you've got a physical coil, uh, what you're able to adjust is the, the damper, uh, uh, the rates of the damper, the, the, the rebound, and so on and so forth in that. So PASM is acting on the damper and not the coil. Now, when this was introduced in, I think, the 997-911 Gen 1, um, it was uh, considered to be a, quite a bit of a game changer, really, uh, because it added some flexibility to the way the car drives. Now, it should be said that Porsche do tend to sell their cars with a passive suspension pretty well, but this is definitely um, a useful feature where you've got roads that will be uh, have a variety of road conditions, smooth, rough, so on and so forth, and if you're going on track, that helps too. So... It's worth saying that PASM is always active. Uh, it, the system is constantly working, and this button is effectively changing um, the, the default setting for the damping. With the light off, we can call this uh, comfort mode or normal, and that is a set of parameters and uh, a map being applied. When we turn it on, we are simply changing the map and the accompanying parameters and how they work. Effectively, with the button on that sport mode, uh, but that is uh, also not a binary um, switch. Uh, the clever, the really clever thing about PASM is that it's a constantly varying and variable system. So whether it's off, comfort or normal, or on, sport, the system is constantly shuffling back and forth depending on various inputs, depending on the road conditions, how fast you're going, your steering angle and so on and so forth. So I've done a bit of a dig on the internet and I found a document which explains how PASM works. Now I think this relates to the first gen, this being a 9A1, this is the second gen PASM, but I'm gonna just quickly read out the basics here. So forgive me if this is a bit dull for a YouTube video, but I think it might be quite interesting if you're not familiar with how it works. PASM selects the required damper hardness for each individual wheel from a precisely coordinated map in both the normal and the sport program. The possible damper settings range from comfortable to, lovely German coming up here, decidedly sporty. Both programs, which overlap slightly in some areas, are additionally superimposed with five special software modules to provide the optimum damper settings for every driving condition. So it's more than simply on, off, soft and hard. The system automatically selects the appropriate damper hardness based on the PASM program selected and the driving condition identified. So what does that mean? The normal program offers comfortable settings with low damper forces. Special control algorithms in the PASM software modules enable the chassis to offer greater active driving safety in extreme driving situations, even with the normal program. What does that mean in practice? It means that it will firm up the suspension to support the car and produce more stability, even if it's in comfort. To increase driving safety at higher speeds, the dampers are automatically switched to a harder damper setting as speed increases. The dampers switch to a hard characteristic when sport mode is activated. This offers superior agility and excellent steering precision on uneven surfaces. If the system detects an uneven driving surface in sport mode, which it's in at the moment, it immediately switches to a softer characteristic to improve contact with the road surface. So by putting a little bit more 
compliance in the damper, it allows the wheel to stay in contact with the tarmac uh, for, for more of the time. That's where the control comes from. PASM selects the optimum damper setting for this softer character. Excuse me. PASM selects the optimum damper setting for this softer characteristic from the sport map. And it briefly mentions those five modes uh, and the specifics that accompany that. I won't go into the details, but those five modes are lane change module, vertical control module, lateral acceleration module, module brake module, and load change module. So what we've got here is classically Porsche. It's a really quite sophisticated system. And what I love about it in this car is that it doesn't matter whether the button's off or on, it will constantly sense what's necessary and depending on whether you want to bias to comfort or bias to sport the system will react accordingly what it means in practice is if you're going down the road in soft and you suddenly brake turn the car hard um, accelerate hard or have to make a rapid adjustment it will react and firm up the suspension to suit so you're getting the best of both worlds here and that's why i love it so much and that's why it's one more feature in the center console that gives a real ability it gives us a real ability to moderate and modify the characteristics of the Boxster. So we don't have the drive control wheel in this car but as you've started to get a sense I, I hope what we can really start to do is modify the characteristics to suit. So smooth road you want a bit more control you want to stop the car maybe floating a little but you don't want anything more than that pass them on. If you want to put a bit more sound a bit more character in you can do that. If you're driving through an urban environment and actually you're mindful of emissions or just sitting at a traffic light, you can uh, well, you can actually have to also start stop on. If you want to, the reverse of that, you can turn it off and you might then at that, at that point decide to turn PSC off as well. And on we go. So uh, you can enable sport mode manually with PASM on. You can turn off PSC. You can pop the spoiler up as well if you like that look. If you go into a car show, you want to wash it. We can just dump all of that and put a Sport Plus on, put that back on. And actually, since we're here, we can actually get the full set. Um, obviously, this is a, a one or this is binary. It's either Sport or Sport Plus if you select either of those. And that's basically everything you can have lit up on the Boxster center console, Cayman center console in the 981 GTS. Turn those off. Drop the rear spoiler. Re-enable, auto start, stop. Oh no, that's in sport, so we'll turn off sport. Re-enable, auto start, stop. Turn PASM back to comfort on normal. Put PSM back to full support. That's how we start the car. That's how we've ended the video. I hope that's given you a little flavor of the versatility of the Boxster's buttons and how it, even in the absence of the drive control wheel that the later models have, we can still create some wonderful character in the way that the car goes down the road. Now I'm giving away the tricks of the trade here. That's how I've just shot the overhead shot for this video. Anyway, I hope that's been interesting. I hope you've discovered a little bit more about how the buttons work and how they're more than just simply on-off buttons for the various systems on the 981 and in the, this car, the GTS particularly. Perhaps you didn't know about PASM. I think that's really useful to understand what happens when you press that button. The other buttons, how they work in combination. I don't have the drive control. No one does on the 981s, but you really don't miss the opportunity to configure the way the car drives. Anyway, there we go. That's enough for now. Uh, thank you for watching, as always. I hope it's been useful and interesting. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.